Okay, good morning. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers. This is the daily ecom planning session. So my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them get organized, get focused, get consistent in their business. If that's you, I'm here for you. You can schedule a free 20 minute coaching session, but we'll get into that in just a second. So today's topic is eight tips. Technically there's nine, but eight tips to drive organic traffic this Black Friday. These tips you can actually use anytime, but they are specifically designed to help you this Black Friday, Cyber Monday to drive some traffic. And so you can start implementing these right now today and uh, continuing to work on your listings as you go through the next several days. So before we get into the tips and before we go through the daily econ planning checklist, I invite you to go download the daily e-com planning checklist. We are live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So you can go to Facebook, find the e-commerce planning Facebook group, go download the daily, weekly, and monthly checklist because tomorrow, Saturday, we will be going through the weekly checklist tomorrow morning at 7.30. So join us tomorrow morning at 7.30, Saturday, as we go through the weekly planning checklist. List. In any case, go to the file section so you can download those documents and that way you'll have them readily available after we go through the eight, technically nine, uh, Black Friday traffic trip tips. So with that, let's get into it. <clears throat> so here's eight tips to help you drive some organic traffic to your listings this Black Friday. Again, you can use these anytime. But specifically, there's going to be a lot of people running ads and doing a lot of different things. And maybe you just don't have the capital or the funds to uh, be able to place ads. So here's some ways in which you can help get traffic to your existing listings or maybe to your new products. So I do want to encourage you to go back and listen to our series that we did part one, part two, part three and part four for Black Friday prep tips. Go back and listen to those if you haven't already done so. And then use this. This is an extraction of some specific ones that are out of there. Um, use this to help you this Black Friday if you are tight on funds and you need to drive some traffic to your existing listings. Some of this will apply to you depending on your platform that you sell on or your method of e-commerce. And some of this may not apply to you. So let's get after it. First thing I want you to do is to analyze or update your title. The first five words of your title, technically, technically the first five to seven words of your title are crucial. Some platforms, it's the first three. Some platforms, it's the first five. And some platforms, they incorporate the first seven. You know, long tail keywords are going to be extremely important in this uh, process over the next couple of days. Long tail keywords is a combination of a few keywords together and it makes more, it's more than one keyword. And so if it's a phrase, if it's a saying, whatever it happens to be, it's normally a phrase of something. So I'll give you an example, um, cast iron skillet. So it's not just a skillet and it's not just cast and it's not just iron, it's a cast iron skillet. That is a long tail keyword because it's that's what the product is. And when people are looking for stuff, they're when they're looking for a cast iron skillet, they're not typing in the search box cast, and they're not typing in the search box skillet. They're searching in the, uh, they're typing in the search box cast iron skillet. So it's more than one word. That's a long tail keyword. So knowing what those long tail keywords are to find your product or the long tail keywords are for your product. Making sure that you incorporate that into the title is going to be extremely important. So whatever your method is that you currently do to create titles, just go back and look and make sure you've incorporated what it is or how it's most searched. If you're not really sure, we did a segment where we talked about um, how people are searching. So you can go to the search box on Amazon and type in the first couple of letters for this particular product, not the entire phrase, not the entire name of the product, go into the search box on eBay, go into the search box of Walmart and clear out your Google searches and go into the search box of Google. See what the first couple of words are that automatically phrases or combination of words that automatically default in first 10 that automatically default in before you finish typing the entire name of what this product is. 
And then that will give you an idea on those four or five different platforms, how people are searching for this particular product. And that is how you kind of figure out how is it most searched. That's a little tip. Number two is to name your image files. You should always name your image files, name your image files what it is, because people can do image searches. They've been able to do image searches, I feel like, since 2012, 2014, somewhere off in there. But of course, it's become more and more popular. So naming your products, even if they can't find it in the regular organic search on page one or page two, if they do an image search for it, bing, 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 your product could be the one that actually comes up. So name your image files as you upload the files to whatever platform in which you're listing on so that that way you have a potential opportunity to have your product be found organically. There's nothing like having an image file that's called IMG underscore 456. Like that's not helping you. People aren't doing a search for IMG underscore 456. Okay. So name your image files. Number three, um, make sure that you have amazing images. Make sure your pictures, your photos, your graphics, whatever you're doing, make sure that they are bright, they're clear, they're colorful. They are optimized for mobile because a significant number of people, over 50% of buyers, over closer to 62, I believe is the percentage, uh, will be buying through mobile devices. So especially when people are sitting around after that having that Thanksgiving dinner and they decide they want to go do some random shopping, like they're all huddled around somebody's phone. They're not really probably breaking out the laptop. They're all on their mobile devices looking for products. So keep that in mind as you are uh, uploading your images. If your images are too tiny, if you have a lot of white space around them, um, if they are not clear, if the images are grainy, those are not the ones you want to put up. You want something that is eye popping. Seriously. Number four, update your description. Whatever you currently have in your description, just kind of analyze it. See if it makes sense. See if it's inclusive. See if it, you know, if it has enough detail. Now, detail specifics are extremely important. Dimensions, colors, sizes, anything else that's important to know, caution, all those other things. You need to make sure those are all in there. So make sure there's as much information as possible. Even if you're reselling like used items, make sure that you have any information that's going to be important to know around tears, rips, that kind of stuff, broken pieces, whatever it happens to be. But the other thing is, what is this? Who's this product perfect for? And or how is it used or what is it used for? Sometimes those descriptors get overlooked because we're just putting in the specifics of maybe what we saw on the outside of the box of the product or we're cloning somebody else's listing. No, no, no. So I'm just saying go through and think about, again, who is this perfect for? How is it used or what is it used for if you haven't included those? So whatever you're currently doing with description, include what you're currently doing. Hopefully you're doing a great job with that and then include this. Make sure you have some long tail keywords in there on what you discovered when you did that whole quick search. So go back and listen to this again. I gave you that quick, how it's uh, most search tip so that that way you can incorporate that into your process as well. Number five, review and compare the first five competitors listings for ideas or inspiration. So I like to use three platforms in order to kind of figure out what pops up first. So if I'm selling a cast iron skillet, I'm just going to go to the Amazon search bar and type in cast iron skillet. And I'm going to hit search. And whatever the first five listings are that are not sponsored, not sponsored. So you can see the little sponsored underneath. I'm going to ignore those. And I'm going to go to the ones that don't have the little sponsored under them. And when I do that, I am going to use the information I discovered from those first five to kind of compare it against my listing and say, okay, what did they include that I didn't include? What do their images look like? What do their descriptions look like that I could have improved mine? So I do that on Amazon. I also do that on eBay. What comes up first? And I kind of get some inspiration. Maybe there's some phrases, words, or a descriptor that I didn't include that they included that might help me get a little more organic traffic. And, and then I also do that on Walmart. So those are the three. Sometimes I'll do it on from Google as well. But again, I just kind of go and see what automatically pops up in the first search, search results. And that's it. And I don't go any further. And then I just pick the first five and 
compare their listings to mine and see if I need to make any edits, adjustments based on the stuff that I previously mentioned in the top four. Number six, share your listings or links across social media, including Pinterest. I think people overlook Pinterest. People, a lot of shoppers will sometimes find things because Pinterest has been doing a pretty decent job of making those uh, the product, the stuff that they have on their platform available for people to find in the search box organically. So people are looking for something. They're looking for ideas, especially if you have an amazing bundle. I find that Pinterest is a great platform for selling bundles um, or showcasing your bundle. So consider using Pinterest or sharing your products on the Pinterest, especially if you have bundles of things. And especially if you're like crafty, creative, whatever, like you, you're you on Etsy, you've made some amazing bundles from there and you want to get some more traffic or tra traction on your listings, definitely go share it across the Pinterest. Number seven, make a few TikToks, Instagram Reels, and or YouTube Shorts of your products. Again, if you're showcasing some specific products this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or if you're releasing something brand new, exciting, different this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, definitely create some TikToks. And if you have an abundance of stuff, maybe you bought like five pallets of something and you really want to get some traffic or sales on your listings, TikTok and IG Reels and YouTube Shorts have all been quite lucrative for people. So definitely consider making those, even if you are not perfect at it. You don't have to show your face. That's the great thing about it. You can just showcase the product. You can show the product in use. You can get your kids to do to actually play with the product, use the product, whatever. Or even if you don't want to show show the product, like you don't have it physically in your house, you've maybe shipped it off to an Amazon warehouse. You can actually use your phone to record pictures of the product from other screens. So again, you there's all kinds of ways in which people use TikTok to showcase their products or to share products and to drive traffic to their stores and or links or whatever. You can also create short links for your products that you can put into the TikTok, the Instagram Reels or the YouTube Shorts so that people can come back and find it. Number eight, use Pingler and Ping Farm. This one is definitely an unsung hero. Uh, creating your listings now and then coming back three days later and running your listings through Pingler and Ping Farm again, and then three days later running them through Pingler and Ping Farm again will definitely help you get some uh, traffic. What it does is it create backlinks. It creates backlinks. I can continue speaking normally. Um, <laughs> it creates backlinks. And so backlinks are when you share the distinct link or the unique URL across social media, you're creating a backlink to your original product. Pingler and Ping Farm do the same thing. They, they uh, create backlinks to your product. And so they can that can cause your products to come up at the top of the search. This can be used by everybody. If you have your links to your product, sharing it across those platforms will help you to get some organic traffic automatically. And then your bonus tip is to go live. If, you know, there's a reason why comments sold, there's a reason why some of these other platforms like whatnot and other, you know, even on Facebook Live, Facebook Shopping, there's a reason why they are popular. Go live. Go live on Instagram and show your product, showcase your product, talk about your product, talk about the features of your product, talk about people, how people can get your product. If you have an Amazon uh if you have a brand on Amazon, you could actually potentially go live on Amazon Live, go live on Facebook Live, go live on YouTube streaming. If you've got an audience, even if it's a small audience, showcasing your product, make sure that you take advantage of how you title that and how you have, uh, you know, how that product is listed so people know where to find it and how to find it, how to get to the link. So make sure you've created your short links in advance. So I hope that you use this uh, to help you this Black Friday. I hope you to use this to start driving traffic to your listings as you continue to optimize your listings and as you continue to work on making some money this Black Friday. So use these tips. Go back and listen to our Black Friday prep, one, two, three, and four, and uh, use this incorporation with those. And uh, come back tomorrow so we can help you again with your e-commerce business. So with that, I do invite you to turn up the dial on your e-commerce business and get laser focus by getting the 2023 My Ecom Planner. It's available now. 
you can go to myeconplanner.com. I forget that I have this lemon in my hand. Sorry. There is a lemon. I've been eating lemons so that I can get my voice back. I've probably been averaging about two or three uh, lemons a day. And so I have a lemon in my hand. So I probably should just put it down if that's the noise that you hear in the background. But in any case, go grab the My Ecom Planner. The 2023 is available right now. It is the ultimate e-commerce planner. It's created for sellers by sellers. You can go to myecomplanner.com right now to grab your e-commerce planner. And if you want to schedule a free 20-minute coaching session, you can go to ecomsellers.com, click on free resources and schedule a free 20-minute coaching session so we can talk about your business, where you are on your e-commerce journey, and what we can do to potentially help you. Um, and last but not least, if you need some support on this e-commerce journey, we invite you to join Ecom Sellers Academy. It's terribly affordable. If you sign up for the lifetime, you get a free e-com planner. You can go to ecomsellersacademy.com right now to sign up. And um, if you sign up for the lifetime, again, you get an e-commerce plan, uh, e planner. If not, if the subscription is $17.99 a month and it is terribly affordable. So with that, let's go through and review the daily e-com planning checklist. If you didn't download it, go ahead and download it now. Again, it's inside the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So go grab the checklist so we can walk through it. Afterwards, we'll be live on Clubhouse so that we can talk about your business. We can talk about what you have planned for the day, for the weekend, What's going on in your business? What are you concerned about? Um, what is your e-commerce method? Um, do you, you know, need to talk about a challenge that you're experiencing right now in your e-commerce business? So join us on Clubhouse so that that way we can have that conversation. So with that, let's go ahead and go through the daily e-com planning checklist, shall we? All right. So like I said before, we're live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So if you want to view the checklist, you can actually go there and you can see it live. So these are daily planning activities. The goal is for you to be consistent and to be con intentional in everything that you do every day in your business. That is the goal to get you to a place where you're, you're consistent and you're intentional about everything. So there's three things that we're going to focus on. One, what you're going to do the night before which will be last night or tonight. Number two, which you're going to be doing the morning of, which is this morning right now. And number three, some advanced planning, some things to consider during advanced planning. So the night before, there's four things that we suggest. The first one is before you go to bed, kind of assess your day, review your day, rate your day. You had hopefully built a schedule or at least a checklist of things you wanted to get done. How did you do? How much progress did you make? What did you mark off the list? What did you not get done? You're like, okay, I need to get these things done. So how did it go? You know, we're going to celebrate the things you got done and we're going to acknowledge the things that didn't get done. And maybe that will help us to build a better schedule in the future. Maybe we were overly aggressive and we had like 40 things down and we probably should have trimmed that back to about 20. But in any case, you know, what did you complete and what do you need to carry forward into tomorrow or into next week or to next month? Then after we kind of review that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to update our daily tracking stats. Your daily tracking stats help you with your productivity, with your consistency, with your focus and your concentration. Helps you to know where you are in your business every single day. So in your daily tracking stats, you're going to update all of the income producing activities that help move the needle in your business. How many listings did you create? How many listings did you rework? You know, what kind of ads did you run? How many, what were your sales? How much was your profit? All of those things matter. Okay. And there's a long list and it's inside the My Econ Planner. So if you grab that, you go be able to go through the list of what are the things that you want to be tracking. Next, um, before you um, go to bed, you're going to review your online calendar. What's on your agenda for tomorrow? What are the things that need to get done in your life and in your business that's on your online calendar? So don't be surprised by doctor's appointments you have tomorrow or the fact that your relatives are driving in tomorrow or that you got to go to little Billy's dance recital or or little Billy's uh, Christmas recital, whatever it happens to be, Thanksgiving dinner or Thanksgiving lunch at school. Like you don't want to be surprised by those things. You should already know that they're coming up or that you're taking pictures with your pets for the holidays. Like all of those things are not surprises. So. They are already on your calendar. Just make sure you increase your awareness before you go to bed of what's on the agenda for tomorrow and maybe the next couple of days. Um, next, we're going to build out our schedule for tomorrow. If we didn't already create it in the weekly planning session, this is a great opportunity for you to kind of outline what are the things that I really need to get done tomorrow? What's on the agenda? 
And we're not just going to include the stuff that's related to our business. We're going to go beyond that. So we're going to include things that have nothing to do with our business, things that have to do with our life. Because God blesses us with 24 hours in the day. Of those 24 hours, we're probably awake anywhere from 16 to 18. So what are you doing with your 16 to 18 that you're awake? How are you investing that time or how are you wasting that time? And are you working on or doing things that are actually going to help you in your business? Or are you just blowing that time by spending all your time online in social media or, you know, binge watching something on Hulu or Netflix? So again, if you're really wanting to move the needle in your business and in your life, make sure you create a schedule that is reflective of being productive and that's also going to push you to actually increase your productivity, your focus, your concentration, and your consistency in your life and in your business. Include the things that you already do on a regular basis that are actually serving your life and your business well. So what I mean by that, if you get up in the morning and you exercise every morning, if that's serving your life well, then definitely get up and do that. You put that on your list. If you read the Bible first thing in the morning, again, that's something that's serving your life well. So go and do that. Things that are serving you well, you keep on the list. Things that are not serving you well, you want to mark those off. So build a schedule that's inclusive of everything that you got going on. Next today, which is this morning, we're going to, when we get up, there's five things that we're going to do. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to review our schedule from yesterday. The reason we're going to do that is our goal is to always build a better schedule, to have to learn from the schedule that we built before. We always want to have lessons learned. So how can we improve our schedule as we build it in the future? The only way that we can do that is we kind of assess what happened the day before. And also, sometimes, you know, when you go to bed, when you're going through your schedule the night before and you wake up in the morning, it's sort of like you've reset and you're refreshed so that that way you have clear eyes. You can look and see, okay, where were my potential opportunities? Where did I potentially drop the ball? Or where were there disruptors that I didn't have a game plan for? You're not going to always have a game plan, a solution, or a you know backup plan for everything that happens in your life because sometimes Murphy just shows up and things happen. Kids will be riding on their scooter and then they break their ankle. Like anything is possible. So you get a flat tire because you drove down the street. Anything is possible. So you can't account for those things. But the things that you can control, the things that are sometimes a surprise to you, those things you want to account for. So go back, reassess your schedule so that you can build a better schedule in the future. Um, the schedule that you got through yesterday or that you didn't get through yesterday and know and understand the reasons why. Next, um, so we want to build a better schedule in the future. We can review it later on. Step two is to review your weekly priority. This is the end of the week. It's Friday. So what were you, what was on your agenda for this week? What are the things that you wrote down that you needed to accomplish this week? And where are you on that journey? If you had 10 things that you wanted to get done this week and you're on number nine, then you got a lot of work to do today. (laughs) If you had 10 things on your list and you were able to whittle away at them two at a time each day, then maybe you're down to two. So again, what was your priorities for this week? And then what are the habits that we're tracking when it comes to your business? So, and also your life. So habits that you might be tracking that are related to your life is like, oh, okay, I need to make sure I'm drinking at least 96 ounces of water. That's just something that's going to help improve your life. Uh, Things that you may be tracking as far as your business, maybe this week your goal was, or ongoing, you've been working on in the month of November, that you want to create 200 listings a week. So where are you in that 200 listings? Are you at like 180 at this point or 160? Are you close to hitting your 200 mark? So again, what were those uh, habits that you're working to build so that that way you can use that to help grow your business and grow yourself? Number three, um, take a glance at your monthly plan. What was on your agenda for the month? What were the personal things that you had on your agenda for the entire month of November that needed to happen in the month of November? What were your income producing goals for your business? What were your operational goals, your marketing goals, your traffic goals, maybe some goals that you established for your VAs? What was on your agenda for the month of November? Okay. And As you look at those goals, where are you trending and tracking? This is the second full week in November. Next week is the third full week in November. Then after that, we got a partial week. So November only has three full weeks and it's got two partial weeks. So where are you on that journey? Because if you had a lot of stuff on the monthly agenda and maybe you had 200 things on the monthly agenda and you're only at 50, you got a lot of work to do. So you want to be mindful of where you are in this journey of trying to accomplish things on your agenda for the month 
personal and business and where you are for your priorities for the week, personal and business. Number four is to go through and review that schedule that you wrote last night. Let's review it. Let's read it because, you know, we read it last night and hopefully as you slept, you, your brain was, your subconscious mind was visualizing your day, stepping through it. So as you pull it out again today, do you need to make any adjustments based on the previous two that we talked about? That's the first thing. The second thing, if you feel like this schedule is good, then we're going to we are going to step into the schedule. We're going to go ahead and execute it. So you want to visualize your day before you start your day. You want to read the schedule out loud, speak it into existence, speak it out loud so your subconscious can hand it over to your conscious mind so that every time throughout the day you kind of get derailed or sidetracked, that your subconscious mind will help your conscious mind get back on track. This is what we visualized last night. This is what we visualized this morning. Where am I? Oh, I should not be watching Netflix right now. I'm supposed to be doing this thing over here. So make sure that you use that as a way of uh, staying on okay. track. Yeah. And then number five is to write out a draft of your schedule for tomorrow. Just a draft. It doesn't have to be detailed. And while we're at it, if you want to write a draft, that means Saturday. You can write a draft of your schedule for Sunday and also for Monday. Just a draft. It's just an outline. doesn't mean that this is what it's going to be. It's just so you're thinking in advance of what are the other things that you want to try and get done based off of your weekly priorities and your monthly goals. The last part of this journey is advanced planning. There is the schedule that we have built, this routine that we're trying to establish. And there's going to be these things that come up that are disruptors. Sometimes they're disruptors and we know that they're coming, but subconsciously we're avoiding them or we're procrastinating or whatever the case may be. And so those things like Thanksgiving is next week. If you're in the U.S., Thanksgiving is next week. All right. So that doesn't mean that if you're working your e-commerce business, that you put your e-commerce business to the side. For some people, they do. Maybe they have a team. And so they're able to say, OK, everything that we're doing, we're doing it this week because all of next week I'm spending with my family. And that's fine. And there are those that are working in their business. Maybe they're working a full time job and they're balancing Thanksgiving with family and friends and also running their e-commerce business, also taking care of their families like that's stuff that happens. So. Let's be proactive about those things that are coming up that we know about so that we can create a schedule that will account for and adjust for those things that are coming up. Thanksgiving is not a surprise. We know that it's coming. The fact that you're not thinking about it right now might be the issue. So maybe strategically you can make some decisions about how you want to address Thanksgiving. Maybe invite your family to come in Christmas instead of this Thanksgiving to reduce your stress levels. Maybe what you do is that you order Thanksgiving dinner from a restaurant or from a grocery store. So then that way you can just pick it up and heat it up and you can continue working on whatever your game plan is for this Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So think about ways that you can strategically be more efficient. Think about ways that you can reduce your stress. Think about things that you can do, adjustments you can make to your schedule and to your routine so you can continue to make progress in your business. So with that, and then put those things into play so that you're not caught off guard. Next week shouldn't be a surprise to you. You should already have a game plan. And if you don't, here's an opportunity for you to start building one. So with that, I hope this information is helpful. I hope it was a blessing to you and your business. Um, I hope that you use this, share this out with a friend, let somebody else know about the daily econ planning um, session so that that way maybe they can get their business going or get their business back on track if they kind of got derailed over the last couple of days, weeks, months, and years. <laughs> Again, my name is Nicole Whitlock. This is the Daily Ecom Planning Session, where we try to give you some tips to help you on your e-commerce journey and help you to get organized, get focused, get consistent in your business. It is all about those being um, intentional about the actions that you take in your life and your business so you can move the needle every day. So my prayer, my, we're going to stay live on Clubhouse. So if you want to unmute yourself, ask any questions, talk about your business, you can join us over there. So jump over to Clubhouse if you want to continue the conversation. Otherwise... My prayer, my wish, my hope for you is that you have an, an extremely focused, highly productive, and very profitable day. And we're going to say goodbye for now.